Oh shoot, am I gonna DNF this? I don't wanna have wasted all that time. Hey friends, it's Ren, and today I'm going to be doing a 24 hour reading vlog. I personally can't believe it because I am 500 years old in spirit and the idea of trying to stay up for 24 hours to read just seems like a lot. But you know what? I'm falling behind on my reading goal already. It's only like the 16th of January and I'm already failing quite miserably. So I decided to just lean into that to fix it right away with this 24 hour reading vlog. So it's Saturday. I decided that I'm going to start at 9 p.m. tonight and then continue until 9 p.m. on Sunday. So you're probably wondering, what books are you gonna be using to fill this time? I've got quite a, a vast array. Not like vast in terms of numbers, but vast in terms of they're completely different books. First, I have started 13 Stories by Jonathan Sims. I would really like to finish this. This is a horror story. It's almost like an anthology because each person, there's 13 different people um, and they all have 13 very different experiences with something weird that's happening in this luxury apartment building. I am a good chunk through it, probably like a third of the way through it. I would really like to finish it during this 24 hour reading vlog. So that's something I'm going to be working on. The fact that it's horror, I don't, either I could read this at night and be so scared that it keeps me awake or I could do the cowardly thing and read it during the daytime. Next, I have The Autobiography of Red by Anne Carson. This is a novel told in verse and it is very short. So I figured this is like my safest bet. I will absolutely 100% finish this during this reading vlog. That's my thought pattern anyway, that's my hope. I don't know really anything about the premise of this. I know that it is like a retelling of a Greek myth. I know it involves Heracles in some way. I don't think it's like the labors or anything. So I really don't have any idea, but this is just a book that I wanted to read for some time and it's short and it's in verse. So I figured it's perfect for a 24 hour reading vlog. The last one is the one that I'm most nervous about. Uh, it is on audio and this is my tip to anyone who wants to do a 24 hour readathon you need to have at least one audiobook in there because you will get so sick of reading. But it is Beach Read by Emily Henry. I have heard such mixed reviews of this book and it's been on my radar for quite a bit. So I used my Libro FM credit and I picked it up and so I will be figuring out if I like it in this reading vlog. We'll see. I'm excited. So those are the books that I plan to read. I don't think that I'm going to read more than these. That would be very surprising to me. Um, but if I do, I'll let you guys know what I pick. I definitely have some on the back burner just in case, but yeah, I don't think that I'll read more than I have here. So I will see you guys tonight when I actually start this reading vlog. It is 7.59, exactly. Um, I was going to start at 9, but I don't really have anything else to do and I figured why wait. So we're going to do 8 p.m. today to 8 p.m. tomorrow. I started a poll on Twitter to see uh, whether you guys thought that I should read the scary book to try to stay up late or if I should read the scary book during the day tomorrow. So I'm going to check the results of that. I feel my prediction will be that you guys want me to suffer. Hopefully you prove me wrong and I'm just a cynic, but let's see. Narrowly. <laughs> By one vote, you guys voted to read it during the day. 52.4% to 47.6%. How kind of you. I will absolutely read it during the day. That is much what I prefer. So I guess I'm starting with Autobiography of Red. Yeah, because I don't really want to start an audiobook right now. I feel like an audiobook is when you're tired of reading. So let's start with Autobiography of Red. I'm definitely going to get this one done. I feel it in my bones and also it's just very short so let's start on that one now. So it is 918. I am 98 pages in to Autobiography of Red. It is completely different than I thought it was gonna be. It's more of like a coming of age story than anything else. Like it's set in modern times. I know I said that I, it had to do with Greek mythology and it kind of does like very vaguely. It has a toe dipped in. Definitely the names 
are Greek mythology based, but the story itself really isn't. I was a little worried in the first 20 pages because I just felt kind of lost. I don't know if I got into a rhythm or if it just actually started making sense, but yeah, it's, it's extremely good. It's reminding me of like everything that I love about poetic writing and like writing in verse. Um, and Carson is just magnificent, a magnificent writer. So I am really, really enjoying it. I'm enjoying it much more than I thought I would even. I assumed that I was probably gonna like it, but I definitely didn't go into, think into it thinking that this was gonna be like a new favorite or something. So I am pleasantly surprised and really, really enjoying it. I don't know if you can tell by my low energy <laughs> but i'm pretty tired already and like i said you know it's it's 9 20 now and that's kind of embarrassing right like i'm really just showing that i am actually an elderly person and that i can't stay up past like 11. but i will definitely finish this since i read this much in an hour i can definitely finish the last 50 pages. I don't have hopes that I'm actually gonna stay up for these entire 24 hours. I know I may have hinted at that at the beginning of the vlog, but I just don't believe in myself that much. So we're gonna see how late I can stay up. I can make myself stay up. It's not something that I'm accustomed to doing anymore. There were days in my youth when I stayed up until like 7 a.m. No longer, so. Again, I'm gonna work on finishing this, but I just wanna give you guys that update that this is very good so far. Sorry if I'm talking kind of quiet. It's just that time of night where I feel like I need to talk quiet, but I finished Autobiography of Red. My thoughts are pretty much the same as when I last checked in with you. It is. A beautifully written book um, and I don't know who I was trying to think of who I would recommend it to because I feel like it, this is not gonna be for everyone but I think that if you're not too attached to like narrative structure and like things making sense a hundred percent of the time you'll probably be fine with this um, yeah it was just a really beautiful read a really beautiful experience a very evocative experience. I, I really really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it way more than I thought I was going to so it's definitely a good start to this 24 hours. Unfortunately I'm running into a problem here. The problem is that I am I feel like I can read a little bit more and I don't want to start the audiobook until I feel like I really don't want to read anymore um, and then I don't want to start 13 stories or continue with 13 stories because I want to be mentally healthy tonight. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I should pick up a different book. I feel pretty good that two hours into my 24 hours I've already finished my first book so I think maybe I can get away with a different book but I have no idea what to pick so uh, I will let you guys know if I pick anything. So you will be truly shocked to hear that I fell asleep. <laughs> so no other books were read last night, but I am up bright and early to start 13 stories. Well, not start it, because I'm kind of already one third into it, but continue 13 stories. I'm ready to be scared now that it is daytime. So let's crack into this one. I'm about a hundred more pages through 13 stories. I'm over halfway through now and I'm enjoying it. It's about a three star for me right now. Structurally, it's like a short story collection. So like each chapter is a different story, but they're all tied together in this one building where weird stuff is happening. And it sucks because like some stories are really, really good. And then other ones, I'm just like, Okay, I think this book is too long. <laughs> I think that it definitely could have done with fewer characters because each chapter, like I said, focuses on a different story and a different character and some of them are like interacting with each other. It's just, it's just a lot happening and I don't love that. 
it's too long and too short at once because there's so much happening but like it could definitely be edited down. There definitely don't need to be all these characters. There definitely don't need to be all these stories. It's just not bowling me over. There are some stories in here that are really, really good, but others just bore me to tears. So I'm not hating this by any stretch. I'm not even disliking this by any stretch because like I said, some stories, very good, but then I switch to a different one and it's boring. So very inconsistent. I guess that's the best way to put it. But I am pretty tired of physically reading now, so I think I'm going to switch to the Beach Read audiobook. I am nervous <laughs> about this one. I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about it because I've heard many different things. It sounds interesting to me, so hopefully it actually is. While I'm reading it, I think that I'm just going to like tidy up my room, do some chores. I like to be actively doing stuff because it just seems like a good excuse to do stuff. I'll let you guys know what my thoughts are. Okay, I've barely started, but I have two comments already. First, I don't like that this is in first person. I don't really like books that are in first person unless there's a specific reason for it. And I don't think that this book will have a specific reason for it. Second of all, it's set in Michigan. I love Michigan representation. We rarely get any. So, you know, a positive and a negative <laughs> coming right off the top. I don't know about this one, folks. I'm not that far into it, so I'm trying to withhold my judgment, but the narrator's already kind of annoying me. And for that to be the case, 20 minutes into the book, ugh, ugh, I don't know. <laughs> I'll keep listening though and clean my room and stuff, I guess. So yeah, just wanted to give that little update. It is 12.36 in the afternoon. I am about 53% of the way done with Beach Read. Mm, I'm vaguely enjoying myself, we'll say that. And I know you can sense the butt that's coming. <laughs> I just, I don't know what it is about this book. That's a lie, it's the main character. <laughs> she just irks me. Uh, she irks me kind of in my spirit. She's just making pretty wild assumptions about the love interest, Augustus Gus. For having known him for, what, like three seconds? Uh, she knew him in college, but they didn't really know each other, so now they're just getting to know each other. And again, she's acting like she knows him extremely well and like understands his brain and everything and she doesn't have any basis for her assumptions. And I kind of get that in some level, but only on the level of like assuming people don't like you or something of that nature. I, I do that, but she's assuming things that are inherent about him as a human being that I just, I can't vibe with it. Similarly, she's getting mad about him not communicating stuff to her that is personal about his personal life. And again, they don't know each other that well. So I just don't understand why you assume that someone needs to be ready to convey things to you if you feel comfortable conveying things to them. I don't know if I'm just a much more reasonable person that way. I don't know if this is normal behavior. I just am never under the assumption that anyone has to share anything that doesn't have to do with me. I just don't believe that anyone I'm entitled to information about anyone, you know? I can't deal with her like entitlement regarding personal aspects of this man's life just because she knew him in college and because she shared stuff with him. I just don't love it. I do like their relationship and the way that they engage with each other, their banter, although they do sometimes say things that are deeply corny that make me feel very uncomfortable so i don't love those moments but overall i think they're kind of cute together they have chemistry but it's not enough for me i feel like chemistry is a very baseline for a book that is so focused on a romance so i don't know i don't know about this one i i feel like i'm not at the point where i want to dnf it except i kind of am i kind of am at the point i don't know because i just kind of feel like i'm wasting my time listening to it i kind of want to see how it ends i kind of want to read the culmination of their relationship and the writing and everything like that that they're doing but at the same time do i actually care that much I don't know because I'm already at 53%. You'd think that I'd be at the peak of caring at 
I feel like halfway through is when you're supposed to care the most. But I don't. Oh shoot, am I gonna DNF this? I don't wanna have wasted all that time, but I guess it's a sunk cost fallacy. I would be wasting more time by finishing it. Oh my god. You guys are seeing me like have these thoughts in real time. <laughs> I'm listening at three times speed. I have an hour and 33 minutes left. Do I want to give it an hour and a half of my life? You guys don't need to be here for this, this <laughs> existential crisis. It's not that serious. This, I feel every time I DNF a book, it feels like an existential crisis, but uh, I don't know. I'm gonna listen to a little bit more of it. No, I don't know. Oh, okay. I'll just let you guys know because I can't make a decision right now. Maybe I'll just keep reading 13 stories instead and see how I feel later. I ended up finishing Beach Read. I don't know why. I really don't. Um, I'm glad that I did. I'll say that because the ending I liked so much more than the rest of the book. I shouldn't even say the ending. It was like the part before the ending. I don't even know. It wasn't that good. Um, it did make me cry, but again, most established fact about me on this channel is that I cry at almost every book. So, you know, not a huge bar to cross. That said, I think there was too much happening in this book. That's my number one thing. There were like these cult interviews because they were doing research for Gus's book or slash, I guess, uh, January's book, who was the heroine. And then there was the thing with her dad and there was the thing with her dad's mistress and it was just there was so much happening alongside the love story with her writing and it it, it was just a lot um it felt very bogged down for what i thought was just gonna be a romance novel that said i did like their relationship i thought they were cute together i thought that their banter was nice i thought that they had really really good chemistry they're not my favorite couple. I really liked Gus. They were cute and I'm glad that I finished it just because, you know, I got some joy out of it, out of like their relationship with each other. Um, once it started focusing more on that, I think that was where I was most interested, I suppose. So that is two books that I finished for this reading vlog. I'm very happy about it because Goodreads keeps reminding me that I'm one book behind already on my goal. To tell me this early in the year, that I'm already behind, it does feel rude. It feels like an attack. So I'm glad that I won't have to see that at least for a little while. So it is 2.16 now and I'm going to be reading hopefully the rest of 13 stories. I would love to have three books done for this reading vlog. I think I'm over halfway done. So I think that I'll be able to finish it. I did it. I did it. I've read three books in this readathon within 24 hours. I feel extremely accomplished even though one of them was like already a third done. You can't take this glow away from me. <laughs> Let me move the camera up because I feel like y'all are really far away from me. Um, Yeah, I finished 13 stories. It was fine. <laughs> it's probably one of the most solidly three star books that I've read in quite some time. Basically the premise of this book was just like capitalism sucks and there is no ethical consumption under capitalism and I agree with both of those things. So you know I can vibe with the message. Unfortunately the avenue it took to get to that message kind of shaky. The first few stories, I feel like he used all of his like best ideas in the first few stories because everything after that was kind of boring. There were a couple I felt like didn't live up to their full potential, I guess you could say. One specifically I thought he could have done a lot more with, but overall it was it was good. Uh, especially the beginning, like I said, the beginning stories were especially strong. Um, there was this one about an art dealer that I absolutely loved. I completely vibed with it. So I was, yeah, I was loving that one. There was a lot of casual representation, which I appreciated of queerness. But other than that, it didn't wow me. Uh, it was actually kind of disappointing, I guess. I don't know if I mentioned it in this video, but Jonathan Sims is the writer for the Magnus Archives, which is a podcast, a horror podcast that I listen to pretty religiously. And it is formatted very similarly to this in that it is 
uh, a bunch of different sort of horror stories, at least in the beginning it was like that. So to have that exist and know that he can write consistently strong stories, that I think they're pretty consistent, more consistent than they were in this. It was just a bit of a disappointment. But overall, I think that if I had just picked this up randomly and I didn't know who Jonathan Sims was, I think I probably would have enjoyed it a lot more. But it's tough to say because I do know who he is and I did pick it up knowing who he is. So, you know, who's to say? But the real debacle that's on my mind right now is that I have one hour and ten minutes to kill. So... I don't want to just end the readathon early, even though an hour and ten minutes is extremely weird timing <laughs> uh, to read another book. I can't imagine that I will get anything done in that time, like a full book done. But I have decided because there's something that I very much wanted to reread this year that is very much on my list to reread this year that I could possibly read within the hour. And that is M. Butterfly by David Henry Wong. I love this play. <laughs> I love this play. So we read this in my, I read this in my junior year of college in the class that convinced me to switch my major to English. Really, this book was what convinced me to switch my major to English. This was what made me fall in love with literature as like a field of study. Um, and you know it must have impacted me if I decided to change my major in my junior year of college. So yeah, I love this play and I have not read it since I read it in the, actually that's not true. I have read it since then. Um, because I made my mom read it and I wanted to talk about it with her, like the details, so I reread it then. But it's still been like three years maybe since I read this, so I really am very much looking forward to reading it. It's only 93 pages, uh, and again, a play, so it'll be a breeze to get through. I will, I'm, I, you already know that I love it, but I'll let you guys know more in detail what I love about it once I've finished it. <laughs> Y'all, what can I say? Like, what can I say to this? It's brilliant. I just, uh, I love this play so much. So I don't even know how to describe it and talk about it. It's a, basically a book about, or a play about imperialism and the way that the West views the East and Asian people and Asian women specifically. And it is so, oh my God, just an immaculate, immaculate play. I love everything about it. Like once again, I'm having that experience where I'm just so in love <laughs> with words and literature and stories and the things that they like bring. Why am I getting weirdly emotional? <laughs> I just love stories so much and this really reminds me of that. It's it's interesting because I think that I would have a similar experience with like if I reread a book from my childhood. Although I don't know because I'm literally crying. That's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> if I read a book from my childhood I don't know if it would be as impactful because this is just so good. Um, and I think that it, it serves a different purpose in my mind than like what made me fall in love with reading I guess. It's my passion for capital L literature I guess that is what makes me really emotional reading this and like remembering how I felt the first time I read it and how I felt talking to my professor about it. <sighs> I'm just feeling some type of way. If you have not read or watched, I don't, I can't remember, but I think that I didn't like the movie. Also, Jeremy Irons just sucks as a human being and I don't like looking at his face. I don't know if I would recommend the movie, but if you can find a recording of the play somewhere, that would be preferable. It's just so flippin' good, you guys. I cannot stress that enough. If you are interested at all in post-colonialism and, you know, the way that the West views the East and that sort of thing, please give it a read because it's just so phenomenal. Now that I've gotten weirdly emotional in this video, um, it is 7.54. I can't believe 
that I managed to do it with such like perfect timing. So let's go over the books that I did finish. First of all, Autobiography of Red by Ann Carson. Liked it a lot more than I thought I would. I'm gonna give it four stars, I think. It's not a complete five star because I didn't have a super personal reaction to it, a super personal feeling about it. I didn't absolutely love it, but I liked it a lot and I would highly recommend it to people, especially people who are into classics. It's not a one-to-one -one with like illusions, but I think that if you have that classics background, you will definitely appreciate this more. That said, I didn't know what they were talking about and I still really liked it. So either way, I think you should probably pick it up if you haven't already. The next book I finished was Beach Read. Two stars for this one, I think. Maybe 2.5. The relationship was cute. I feel like the book was too long and it wasn't even long. <laughs> Uh, I just think that there was just too much packed into it and it took away from the thing that I actually cared about which was the relationship between the two love interests. I think that if it was gonna lean that hard I guess toward the romance genre that it should have leaned into the romance genre rather than having this mix of like cult stuff and the family stuff I guess. So that that was kind of my opinion. It packed too much in and the parts that I cared about were too few and far between. Next finished, 13 stories, just talked about it so I won't go over it in too much detail again, but yeah, three stars. It was pretty solid, definitely good for a debut. I appreciate the way that Jonathan Sims writes horror. I think he has a very unique voice in the genre and he does really unique things with it. So I enjoyed this, some parts more than others. And finally, of course, five star baby. M. Butterfly, David Henry Wong. I cannot recommend this play highly enough. I just went through that, won't go through it again. Please pick it up, for God's sake. Gender, colonialism, imperialism, I just, it's the queer theory, are we kidding? Just everything about this, perfect. So that is it, my 24 hours, I'm two minutes away from 8 p.m. I'm not gonna finish a book in two minutes, so I will end the 24 hour readathon here. Four books ain't bad as far as I'm concerned, so thank you guys for reading with me and hanging out with me. I appreciate your support. Let me know what you're reading, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Stay safe out there.